Australia, a country known to be home to some of the most dangerous animals on the planet. And for every dangerous animal that Australia has, America has a human that is equally, um, delusional. This poll right here was put out a few years ago, and it essentially asks American males what animals they think they could beat in a fight. I've already covered that list, but I found myself in Australia for the Ultimate Self-Defense Championships. And I figured while I was there, I would talk about which Australian animals I could take in a fight. I wanted to be clear, I would not go out of my way to fight an animal. I think that is wrong. I think we can all agree that that is wrong. Okay, we got that out of the way? Okay, good, let's move on. Um, you a terrible idea, right? Yeah, obviously. Now, there's a good chance in Sydney, Australia, that I wouldn't be running into some of the country's most dangerous animals. Um, that's not really the point. But can you really decide if these animals would be capable of doing serious damage to you if you don't really know the size, the shape, the, like, feel the density of them? Well, we're not gonna... What? Feel the density? Yeah, animals are like either dense or they're not dense. Are you dense? Anyway, we're not gonna go actually do that because that would be dangerous. So, we're at the zoo. Now we all know that animals have like defensive attributes to keep them from being eaten by other animals, but I think they also have them against humans. As much as the ability to attack is important, one of its best defense mechanisms is gonna be that you just like don't wanna you're not gonna hit it. I feel like this animal is so cute that I would just let it eat me, you know? But anyway, in all actuality, I think I think it's a W for humans. <laughs> Sorry, Red Panda. Now, the next animal I didn't expect to be kind of stumped by and what I would do if it tried to attack me, but whew, this would be trouble. I have a tactic for dealing with sea lions. I think I figured them out. Okay. I'm, now, anytime we get into the water, I'm kind of like, it's a no for me. I think once we go in there, we lose all advantage, yeah, we're out yeah. of our element, Dunzo, our, our muscles don't even work the same They've way. They've got those teeth. But it's it's method of attacking, and the way that it does things, I think I have a technique. It's only one place I think jiu-jitsu is really the most effective form of fighting. Okay. Right, and that's underwater. So you're the, you're the seal. I'm the seal? Yeah, come on. Now we're in the water, this is an in the water attack. Outside the water, I think you can just circle. I think they'll slowly get tired. All right. <laughs> All right, so seal your, yeah, here he comes, all right? <laughs> Scurry your way over, here comes the seal, right? Now I'm gonna, no, 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 no. Seals don't have arms. No, no, seals don't have arms. They have they hands. Yeah, but they don't use them like that if they're swimming at me. He's gonna swim, no, he's, all right, and he seals. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Mike's whole solution was gonna be, he's gonna put the seal in a guard and then throw elbows, like 12 to six elbows. But those things launch themselves through the air from the water. It would run through you, is what I'm saying. I, I don't think you'd be a sea lion. I think it's a 50-50 shot. Now, typically, I would say that the cuteness rule we used earlier for the red panda would also apply to koala bears. I mean, just look at them. They're asleep for 22 hours a day, and the other two hours, they're pretty much high out of their mind on eucalyptus. But the koala bear also has a near relative, called the drop bear. Typically much meaner and bigger. However, this aggression usually only comes out to non-Australians. Luckily for me, I don't think they keep any at the zoo. Uh, for that reason. But yeah, drop bears have been known for a while as something not to mess with, so... You know, if it's a regular koala, I think I think I could take it. If it's a drop bear, I don't like my odds. All right, now we've gotten a couple of these done. Let's rapid fire some of these bad boys. Stork, more like dork. Easy win. That bill's made of nothing. Tasmanian devil, very small. Just don't let it start spinning. That's like its whole thing. Okay, gross. Kangaroo. Oh, sorry, this one's eating. We'll come back to this one later. Dang it, wait, are they all eating? I, all right, I guess that's enough of the rapid fire. Let's slow it back down. These two otters are the cutest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I would go to war for them. Speaking of war, uh, the next animal actually had a war against the Australians. That's, was it coming out of their body? The Great Emu War was a nuisance wildlife management military operation undertaken in Australia over the later part of 1932 to address public concern over the number of emus said to be running amok and destroying crops in Western Australia. The unsuccessful attempt to curb the population of emus employed the Royal Australian Artillery Soldiers armed with Lewis guns. And they still lost. You want me to fight something that old Australian dudes with machine guns couldn't beat? Pass. I think that's a loss. Do you want to hear something really terrifying? You hear that? That's them. The next animal, you can't even really see it. Um, all you can see are the horns. 
And to me, uh, that, that might, I think that's all you need to see. That's a loss. Yes, yeah, it's like a triceratops in there. Okay, so the next one's gonna be a condor. Now we saw the condors. Which one was that? That, that was this one. So man, he makes me nervous. No, the condor is got a wingspan that is like oh, one and a half. Oh, is that the display where you put That's your arms the display. up? I think that thing is like coming down on you. I think you wind up and you just boom, right down the chest while it's like. But you know, birds are there's like nothing to them. Yeah, right. Like inside that humongous thing, it's nothing. It's just little bird bones. Yeah, look, he just pulls apart. Here's the thing. Now that I'm face to face with all these guys. I don't feel quite the bravado that I felt. I think that there's a, a an aspect of like, like I'm I'm none of this <laughs> is happening. I think I'm gonna. Yeah, it's gonna get you. I think it's gonna. I won't be able to do my stuff. Yeah. Here's I the agree. thing about the next one. Uh, a tortoise probably not gonna attack you. I can take these. Okay. I've got two. I got two things I'm thinking. And also, Mike's answers for this were absolutely horrifying. I'm not gonna. Nobody will ever hear about. There's no people around. I'm, I'm just kind of embarrassed that it happened in the first. Yeah, no, nobody's seen or this. Or barring that, you just stay away from the business end. And it just <coughs> Next, we saw elephants, and I think we can all agree this would be a loss. Luckily, they don't live in Australia, so that's a disqualification for them. However, extremely native to Sydney and apparently kind of bothersome would be the flying fox, essentially a bat. Uh, with the gray-headed flying fox bat. Easy. Give me some bats. High guard. All right. Catch one. Catch two. <laughs> what just happened? I just scratched myself in the eye. First off, bats only come out at night. They use the echolocation. Everybody knows this. Well, what would you do? So I'm a bat, just being a bat? Yeah. Mm. Oh no, bat. <laughs> I'm confused. I feel like this is a good time to reiterate that no animals were hurt in the making of this video. Nope, we didn't even think about hurting animals. The only person that was really hurt was Mike because he was too committed to the bit. Uh, speaking of bits, now while I was in Australia, I figured it would be only fitting to give myself an Australian shave. And if you don't know what that is, that's a regular shave, but down under. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Manscaped. But the product we're talking about today is the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. The Pro Kit includes beard balm, beard conditioner, beard shampoo, beard oil. I'm one of the first people that gets to take a sneak peek at the Beard Hedger. You can have anywhere from a 0.5, anyway to as long as a 10, which essentially means you can trim your hair to about 20 different beard lengths with this one trimmer. When I was in high school, there was this girl that I kind of had a crush on and I was growing my beard out. And I remember asking her, hey, do you like my beard? And she said, no. What was the word she used? I think she used the word mangy, specifically mangy. So whether you're just starting your beard journey like me and you don't want to be called mangy. Mangy, having mange in poor condition or shabby. Yeah, no, that was mean. Or you're looking to upgrade your current routine. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free shipping when you use code sensei at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with code sensei at manscaped.com. I'm gonna go uh, clean up my bathroom before my fiance gets mad at me. I'll be right back. Now that we're back, let's rapid fire a couple more animals we haven't touched on yet to get back into the mood. Praying Mantis. Totally respect the whole kung fu thing. Easy answer though, it's a squish. This spider on my sleeve. Also an easy answer, slightly different. Flick. Giraffes. Not technically an occupant of, you know, the country, but it was at the zoo, I probably would lose. Cassowary is supposed to be like an emu, but meaner. We already answered that question. Probably a loss. And then a dingo. A dingo is just an Australian dog with apparently an affinity to babies. I don't really know the full backstory. It's a shame there's no place for me to look that up. Um, I know this is technically supposed to be the rapid speed one, but I don't, I don't know if I could. They're wild dogs. Look, their teeth are kind of crazy, but I feel like if I had to, I could. But gosh, I'd be, I'd be really sad about it. Hmm. Let's move on to a different category. Of the animals that would do really bad things to you in Australia aren't even on land. They're in the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on record and say like zero things in the water. I can fight zero things in the water. Most of the animals that I wanted to talk about obviously weren't gonna be in the earlier sections of the aquarium. I think all of these are pretty easy answers. The size of my torso. Yeah, okay, not all of them were a given, but some of them I felt pretty confident about. 
And then we got to the big tank. I don't know what you do about that. I don't... Let's be honest. Actually, I don't think I can make that joke here. You can't make that joke. Yeah. <laughs> For most of these animals, I don't know what you could actually do defensively. No, there's too much blubber. Anytime you hit it with anything, give me, give me like a, like a 35. They're impossibly big. They're slippery. Yeah, as non-menacing as they look, I don't think you're fighting off a dugong. But there's plenty more menacing stuff in this tank. Like the most menacing animal, in my opinion, in Australia, the great white. I don't think this is a great white, to be honest. I'm pretty sure this is like a sand or a nurse shark or something. But to be honest, I think we could take it. I wonder if you could like just get a hold of it and just like a bulldog. No, they're skin with a terry Do you want me to show you what I would do to a shark? You would feed it and nourish its body. Okay, picture a shark coming at me in full speed. Boom! Right down the pipe. Like into his mouth? I think that's the only, no, 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 right on the snot. Yeah, I think now's probably a time to pivot to something a little more possible. It kind of halts the whole punch it in the nose thing. Hey, if that Australian surfer dude can punch a shark, I can punch a shark too. The next one we're gonna kind of lump together two separate animals, the wombat and the capybara, because they're essentially a stretched out version of each other. You can't convince me otherwise. No, this guy, look, he's, he can't even walk over rocks and stuff, man. Like, what are you built for? That would be like if you saw a dude and you're like, do you think you could take that dude? And then you saw the dude going like this. Any dude that walks downstairs like this, like, I can fuck it up. Yeah. If one of them came after me, I could like maybe hit like a, uh, like a slide and then scoop the feet. Oh. And then just kind of like hold him here. Um, um so and then no. maybe rub his belly. No. Yeah, so actually after editing this, I changed my mind. Wombat, I would die for this animal. Capybara, put it on a list of Australian animals that I do not care about. Fun fact, Australia has over 2,400 species of spider. Only 50 of them are harmful to humans. Honestly, I like those odds. What I don't like the odds of are snakes. Um, Australia is home to 20 of the 25 most venomous snakes in the world. I don't like those odds. I'm not doing snakes. Pass. I have the most of my nightmares about this animal. I regularly have nightmares about me coming out of the water and then being surrounded by like eight crocodiles. I think I could subdue one. I don't think I could. What are you gonna do? Once you get like here. You, you think, so you think that those neck muscles, you think your neutral grip row is more powerful than the neck muscles on that thing. Hey, look, what other choice do you have? Jeff, what do you think? Jeff, what's your strategy here? If I had to put, I jump, I jump up high, and I, I had to step on his spine. You would like go Bruce Lee? I, I jump over it. I stomp. I try to rear naked choke it. I just think the claws. You have to consider its claws. So if you're behind it and it can get at your arms and things, it's gonna take. It's gonna make you, chunks off your arms. It's gonna make you. You have to be really. Think how how much willpower you have to have to hold on to that. Yeah. Well, if I'm being attacked by a crocodile, what other choice do I have? Give up and die. Oh yeah, that's a good one actually. The last animal on my list is the kangaroo, and it's really interesting because it's the only animal here that I've never seen before. It's the animal that I saw the most of, it's the animal that I think I have the best chance against, and it's the animal that I felt like had the biggest impact on me. If I had to guess why that's the case, this is my first trip outside of the country ever, and no animal represents a country more than the kangaroo does Australia. And not only that, but kangaroos also represents martial art. They punch, they kick, they throw each other through fences. Uh, do you remember that movie Warriors of Virtue? It was sick. It was just kangaroos doing karate. I don't think there was a plot other than that. Kangaroos might be my new favorite animal. Do 28 year olds have favorite animals? I do. I do. But just because kangaroos are sick doesn't mean I can't figure out how to beat them in a fight. See, the largest red kangaroos grow to about 6 feet tall and weigh 200 pounds. That's 40 pounds less than I weigh. Advantage, me. But even the small ones have these little claws and while they are adorable, I will admit they do hurt. Advantage kangaroo. Oh, this one's actually a wallaby. It's, it's holding my hand. <laughs> these aren't even the big kangaroos and this one walking towards you is... It's kind of terrifying. Oh, that's kind of scary. This one just wanted a bit of grub, so we fed him and pet him, and he, he feels like a, he's a muscly boy. 
The necks are a lot stronger than I would have guessed. It feels like they do like a lot of Muay Thai clinch work. And as far as attributes go, I think once you add the human brain, we're pretty closely matched. But I did kiss one in the head, and that kind of asserts dominance over the whole species. <laughs> okay, I'm good. For the rest of my life, I'm good. But I figured for the giggles, I would at least come up with a game plan for what I would do if I was attacked while I was there. Boom. Like this. But see, the thing is, what's the first thing you notice when somebody can't fight? Hmm? Their head does this. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do their raise up. Do they that. do expose their chin. That means they can't fight. But their clinch has got to be like pretty powerful. Oh, no, 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 so we know he's dangerous from the front. His weapons are up here. I do not want to engage directly this way or I'm getting it. This way with these claws to the belly. Oh, oh, I got it. Remember your warm-ups. Remember your jiu-jitsu warm-ups. Oh man, maybe he can't turn that fast. Dive roll. You know what? I don't think they can. Holy crap. I think Ramsey go. do we just solved the problem. Um, thank you, Ramsey. Yeah, so overall, Australia has been a formidable opponent. I've had a lot of fun here. Um, obviously, we have not struck one animal. In fact, I've done more loving than I have fighting animals on this trip. What if we find out that's illegal? Kissing the kangaroos? Yeah. Lock me up. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, my trip was absolutely insane. I can't wait for you guys to see the footage that comes from the Ultimate Self-Defense Championship on Martial Arts Journeys page in a little bit. I'll have it linked down below. Was this me trying to figure out which animals I could beat in a fight? Was it just me having an excuse to go to three different zoos or aquariums? It was the second one. It was definitely the second one.